everybody, I'm Kayla. And I'm Crystal. And we are the, the Cruising, Cruising Chicks. Chicks. She's sassy. <laughs> going to do our a our a our uh our our alaska cruise wrap up it's been so long we forgot what we were doing i know what i did do you not remember what you did yes okay i was about to say crystal like we went on a cruise you just remember these things i try she tries so alaska we went last was it late August? Late August, yes. Into the like the very beginnings of September mm -hmm. of 2023. Um, obviously, since August, we're not there yet. August and September have not happened in 2024. Um, we flew from Charleston to Dallas, Dallas to Anchorage. We stayed the night in Anchorage and then bussed down to Seward. It was like two hours on the bus. Yeah, a lot of commentary. That was fantastic. We learned a lot. Yeah. Um, about just like the daily life of Native Alaskans. Um, and like the struggles they go through being not connected to the United States. Um, the weather. Uh, shipping, all that, you know, fun, not fun stuff. Right. We and learned a lot cost of living all that stuff yes um in seward we hit the sea life center which was fun yes i i got to see a lot of starfish that yes. were massive we had to touch a lot of starfish mm -hmm. that was fun and all different bright fun colors yeah they were really cool like fuzzies yeah. like some were fuzzy some were rough like it was really interesting dynamic of the different um starfish that are native to the alaska area i didn't realize star like starfish came in different that many different species or, or i mean we're used to the starfish here right. they're brown the br <laughs> um now that was a shock to us because they pump in the water from the bay the bay and so like you stick your hand in there and it's freezing yeah. like and i wish like we had read the little <laughs> The little like sign because it does tell you that um but we didn't read it until after we had already stuck our fingers inside and we we're like oh that's cold mm -hmm. they do give you rags to dry off and you know sanitizer and everything to wash your hands so that was nice we're a little disappointed because they didn't have the sea lions out yeah um and we never really got clarification on where the sea lions were um we did get to see the seal the seals Mm -hmm. And the puffins, which was cool. Um, still, though, was a little sad about the lack of sea lions. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, like, we should say there is a free shuttle that runs from the port into the downtown area of Seward, which was, that was amazing. Like, you just mm -hmm. get off. Because when you board in, where do you board? Seward. Yeah. You can board and then get back off and go enjoy the town of Seward. So like we got all, we dropped off our stuff and then that we got back off. Totally weird. It was you know? so weird. So we were able to then, we took the free shuttle and it, it stops at like, what's like eight different places. Mm -hmm. So we just took it right to the Sea Life Aquarium and then it, because it drops off right outside and we went to the Sea Life Aquarium and then we got back on the shuttle and then we were right back on board. Mm -hmm. Super easy, super convenient. But that that was embarkation. That was getting to Seward from Anchorage. Because um, obviously there are no direct flights into Seward, right. Alaska. Definitely not. It's a tiny, tiny little town right on the coast. I mean, I'm sure you can take like a water plane, I would assume. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we had to fly into Anchorage and then bus it. There is a train option but it takes like what i think it was like four and a half almost five mm -hmm. hours and it was double if not triple the price of the bus we paid for right and we were there in two hours which meant we got to walk around and enjoy seward a little more than the yeah. people who took the train did um now did they maybe see more interesting things along the way yeah. maybe we were relatively next to the train track for most of the trip so i don't know like where the extra time comes on, but I don't either. 
that was an interesting thought. Um, unfortunately for us, both glacier viewings were a no-go. Um, I think if you watch Sea Day 2, you'll see that from a very far distance, we got a glimpse of Hubbard Glacier if you were outside. Um, but once we were allowed like on the bow of the ship and the captain was like, oh, we're going into the glacier, like little, I don't even know what you call that, like between the mountains to go up towards yeah. the glacier, um, the fog set in so, so hard, like so fast and so hard that, I mean, we, we couldn't see two feet in front of you at one point and then it started pouring on us. Yeah. Um, so it we, was pretty rainy the whole cruise. Yeah, it really was. Um, we stood on the bow of the ship, I think, for like an hour and a half mm -hmm. and froze and saw nothing. No, we did see a lot of ice chunks. We did see a seal, mm -hmm. which was cool. He was jumping up and out of the water, but then he hid behind an ice chunk and we never saw him again, <laughs> uh, which I think is about where I caught it, the camera, was once he hid behind the ice chunk. Um, but other than that, Hubbard Glacier was kind of a wash. He did um, try to get us to another glacier. He did. He worked really hard to try, and that one still didn't work out. Um, I I think from hearing from other passengers, though, that the little boats that you can pay extra to do, like, the excursion, that they were able to get up to the glacier mm -hmm. um, prior to the fog and the rain rolling in because they took them way before the ship was able to get in closer because... There were like three or four other ships that we watched come out um and i think they were able to go in while those guys were in and i'm assuming that those guys got to see the glacier yeah um we just happened to be the unlucky ones that were last on the agenda um so the next we headed into icy straight point which was our first port stop of the trip if I have, yes, I do have my, I think so. my itinerary correct. Um, that was probably my favorite port stop of the trip. Yeah, it was. The, <laughs> the port itself though is really cool. Yeah. It's very big. Um, there's a lot to do and a lot of the excursions that they offer happen inside the port. Um, the zip lining, there was like a native lunch that they were doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you might have seen a show with that. Is that where the Lumberjack show was? No, that's no. Ketchikan. Oh, okay. Wrong one. <laughs> but we were, when we were at the Orca statue, it was happening behind us. Um, and they had, like, I mean, plenty of benches. They were cooking some kind of fish. Um, the people who were there seemed to have had a blast. Probably salmon. Yes, yeah, so it probably was salmon. That didn't make a lot of sense, Caleb <laughs> okay, Um <laughs> So... Now, I will say we did not have great phone service in no. Alaska, so we were unfortunate that we did not get the email from our excursion because we did an outside tour excursion of where to meet up. So, unfortunately, we walked down to the cannery and um, where they have like a dock, and we had watched other videos who had done the same tour. And that was where they initially must have been meeting up. Right. Like when they first started doing the tour. But then I'm guessing they maybe they just moved everyone to the other dock to keep it all like uniform or whatever. Or maybe, you know, just that's what they need to do for, you know, money and logistical reasons. I don't know. So now you have to take, you have to go to the excursion hub and take the shuttle into Huna. And then that's where you catch your excursion. So, I mean, luckily we caught the email I think we had like what 30 minutes to get mm -hmm. back to the excursion hub which it really is a, a very long trek back and it's not it's like a gravelly yeah we had road to it. yeah so i would say better walking shoes for yeah for icy straight point because it is rocks like you're not walking on the kind of paved path or like concrete or anything like it was just rocks so you want to have better walking shoes than we had um and also note that you can just walk around the cannery to get to the excursion hub, which we learned well after the fact. Um, but either way, we made it back. We did the excursion. We did the whale watching with drone footage. Amazing. The captain was great. We met a lot of great people. And we saw a lot of whales. <laughs> we saw a lot of whales, Crystal. We did. They sang to us. 
They did bubble net feeding, one breach. They, they sang to us? Yeah, I had. Do you, do you speak whale? I, I do speak whale. I am Dory. Okay. I speak whale. Okay. Um, I have footage of it. It's in the video. If you go back and watch your own video footage, Crystal, <laughs> you can hear the whale singing, the one that was doing the fin flaps. No, I was in my own little world at the back of the boat while oh, they yeah. were trying to jump in off the front of the boat. No, when I was trying to jump in, I was in the back of the boat and you were probably <laughs> in the front of the boat. That wasn't, we met the sweetest people on that excursion and I ended up sitting next to their daughter and the two of us were should not have been left together that's what i'm saying we needed adult supervision even though i was the adult <laughs> but her mom was not any better i think it would have been the three of us over the ship like crystal had to hold me by the shirt at one point like they were they were like right here y'all i was not zoomed in for any of that video except for i think i told y'all when i zoomed in like when the whale like when they were pretty far away um when we first saw the tails like I had zoomed in, but like the bubble net feeding that we caught, like not zoomed in. When they swam up to the boat, not zoomed in. Like they were within arm's reach. And I think the captain even realized that I was a problem because he was looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> and his little, his little helper was like, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not jumping in. I mean, as you notice towards the end of the video, when we're out back and we're looking at the otters and the sea lions. The otters! The, the assistant captain, I don't know what he was. He was really nice. He was, he was very young. Um, it was his second season doing the whale watching um, with the captain of the boat. So I don't know what you call him, but he was super sweet. Um, he was back there with the three of us. And I'm pretty sure he was told to like babysit. <laughs> like keep these three in the boat. So, but it was a really, really, really good tour. Highly recommend um, the company. I will link the excursion from Viatar if it's still active in the description. Because um, the drone footage alone was more than worth what we paid. Mm -hmm. Like, because it was cheaper than a lot of other whale watching excursions. You went down? And we got drone footage of the whales we were seeing. It was amazing. But I can talk all day about Icy Straight Point. Mm -hmm. So let's move on. We did get donuts. If you yeah. go to Icy Straight Point, get their donuts because they were phenomenal. And they had, I mean, gosh, like 50 different flavors. I, mean, I probably am exaggerating about the number, but mm -hmm. it was a lot of different flavors and we loved it. Um, My favorite port was Skagway. Well, we're not to Skagway yet. We're not? No, next is Juno, Crystal. Okay. We went to Juno. We did. <laughs> the next morning we were supposed to go to two other different um, glaciers and unfortunately um, it did not work out. And he again, I believe, tried to go, like, because you're in the Tracy Arm Fjord at this point, um, I believe there were like multiple options. Mm -hmm. And he realized we weren't going to be able to get to one because of ice, not fog this time. It was the ice. And so he tried to go to a different one. And I think people were saying that, like, they got glimpses, but nothing to write home about. Yeah, we were having a hard time. <laughs> we were. We really were. So in Juneau, we were at AJ Dock. So that is, like, the farthest dock you can dock at in Juneau without, like, just, you know, having to tender in. And so they run a shuttle from there, which is super nice. You just hop off the boat, hop on the shuttle, and it takes you right to the downtown port area where everyone else just walks to. Um, there were a lot of options for tour excursions. They had like an entire like row of like, mm -hmm. you know, people doing the tour excursions. The tram to go up the mountain is right there. Um, and then there's plenty of shopping. There's the the saloon, the red, the red dog saloon, or the red something saloon. The red onion is red on Skagway. Oh, that's oh. <laughs> there is some saloon that everyone goes to in June. Or was that Tracy's Crabs? Maybe it is. That might be it. Yeah, it's might a restaurant. It. Um, the actually, line's always super long. Yeah, we actually sat outside of it in the rain for like a good thirty to forty minutes. <laughs> it wasn't raining that hard, but like enough, and we still had like hours and hours and hours in Juno, so we just chilled and kind of people watched. Um, but Juno, we just did a lot of shopping. We couldn't ever decide on an excursion in Juno, and yeah. I think we just we were going back and forth on whether we wanted to go to the Mendenhall. But with everything that was going yeah. on last year with the Mendenhall, do you want to explain? So 
apparently the state of Alaska gives out so many passes to go to the Mendenhall Glacier because it's a national park and since so much tourism has happened since coming back from COVID and cruises starting to go again to Alaska, right. they had, you know, even though the uh, season is short, I mean, it's from April to early October, they had already run out of the passes by yeah. July. So I think your best bet was to like book through the cruise line. Yeah, and get an excursion because I guess they have passes. Yeah. But like if you tried to go there on your own, like on a taxi or, you know, anything like that, you weren't going to get there. And I know a lot of like excursions, like if you did outside excursions, were canceling. Yeah. Um, even some ship excursions were canceling. So we just decided we didn't want to deal with yeah. that, with that, like, and, you know, canceling. There was also like a botanical garden we thought about doing, mm -hmm. but honestly, with the way the weather was looking, we were like, because that was more of a, just take a taxi and go. Like once we got into port, um, we didn't have to book anything in, ahead of time. But like, since it was such an outside, like you're looking at trees and gardens and yeah. all that, like, and it was rocky and I was like, if it's raining a lot, it might be muddy. So we scratched that idea, just did a little bit of shopping, Yeah, which was ended up being... We didn't really have a long day there we either. We didn't, because so, we came in late. Yeah, so it, we had a short amount of time there, and so we just kind of took it easy there for the day. Yes, yeah, so I think we were only there like, what, one to six? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because we were the, gla uh, the glacier viewing. <laughs> glacier viewing. Yeah, we missed. But. Uh, yeah, so... Juno was Juno. We had enjoyed it last time we went back in 2017 and we went to the Minden Hall then. So Yeah. Which I was hoping we could get back there again, but you know, that didn't work out. And yeah. see, and they didn't have the whole problem with the passes back in 2017. Right. Yeah, this was the first year I think they've ever like discussed having these issues. So Yeah. They they just like happened. to keep the number of people down that visit the national parks just to try to keep them intact as, yeah makes as, sense. as long as they can makes a lot of sense but apparently a lot of people went to alaska <laughs> hey it's worth it so our next port after juno was skagway which we had a pre-book tour through viatar again and we went rounds on what we wanted to do in skagway i wanted to do the white pass railway um because that's what everybody does in Skagway like mm -hmm. it seems to be like the top tour and the last time we were in Skagway we did what the the sled dogs yep sled dog tour and um, we went to the red onion yeah the saloon the brothel um and we really enjoyed that we really did um had a great time in Skagway and this time we knew we wanted to do some version of going to the Yukon yeah that was definitely our goal yeah, so they offer two different types of tours up to the Yukon. You can do the railroad or you could take a bus. Um, and we were just kind of stuck as to which one we wanted to do. Right. We ended up picking the bus. Which I highly recommend. Mm -hmm. I mean, the train, that sounds great, right? But it was like $200 a person. Mm -hmm. And ours was, I think we paid like 115 Yeah, it was a and, lot, a lot lower. And we were gone twice the amount of time they were. Yeah. Our group had like 18 people in it, yeah. if that. And our tour guide was downright amazing. Yeah, he was really good. Like, a hands down one of the best excursions I've ever done. Mm-hmm. It was definitely my favorite. Um, I was excited to go up to the Yukon and, you know, we made different stops all the way yeah, up. Yeah, we did. Um, and got to see different things, got photo opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, I think that day was one of the best days besides the last sea day as yeah, far as the weather. weather. Um, so it was, you know, really sunny and um, you could see a lot more. We got to see the first snowfall. Yes, that um, was cool up there and it was on like the top of some really high mountain yeah. but it was snow and it wasn't there i think he said two days prior right. now it was so yeah even he was shocked by it um 
but we enjoyed the Yukon. You know, you had to go through the Canadian border and show your passport. Yeah, that was interesting. And the it, customs officer coming yeah. on board and looking at everything. Yeah, and then we went up to the suspension bridge, which I am surprised that I wanted to do it <laughs> and was so excited to do it because I'm afraid of heights. Right. And the fact that you're on this little rickety bridge, it's made out of metal. It was not that rickety. It seemed it very moved. well put together. Yeah, it was made out of metal and like chain link fence, but it, it moved. I mean, yeah, there was three of us on it, and <laughs> we were afraid for anybody else to come up with <laughs> And um, I went out to the middle and took a lot of pictures. In fact, my favorite picture from the whole trip was from the suspension bridge. It was gorgeous. Um, and Mimi went all the way across. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to brave it. And she just took off. Yeah. I got to the middle and I saw what I needed to see. <laughs> now, I will say, I think with our tour guide that we got, your trip will vary. Um, it was extremely windy the day we yes. went. Like, very, like, very windy the I day we went. we were going to get blown away. And, I mean, to the point where our tour guide was like, I've never seen it this windy here. And... Yeah, he was, like, thinking we might not be able to go. Right. I, didn't we miss something because was, it was too windy? He was very concerned about making it up there in time because the wind was pushing. Like, on the way up, the wind was pushing against the van driving. So, he was... He wanted oh. us to not stop on the way up um which initially the tour would have stopped on the way up the wind was so bad that he he we skipped i think a few things that he initially we were supposed to stop at on the way up and he so, so that we could get to the suspension bridge yeah. and to the into the welcome to the yukon sign yeah and so that he knew that the major points of the tour were hit so we did that. We stopped at a few places on the way up. Um, we stopped at a lookout. We stopped. And what was that that desert called? That he did. What did oh. he call that? Oh, and it was so pretty. We stopped there, um, in two different places, I believe. And like he was like, "Do so you guys want to do a little adventure?" Yeah. Um, so that was cool. And he was definitely more of a once we're on the bus and he kind of got a feel for everybody. He was definitely more of a let us choose our own adventure mm -hmm. kind of tour guide, which was amazing. And like, luckily for him, all 20 of us were like, yeah, let's do that. Like, that sounds amazing. Um, so once we got to the Yukon and got turned, you know, got to be turned around, you come back. Um, we went to like a little beach area. Oh, remember the lake? That was on the way back. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So on the way back, he was kind of like, we can stop here. We can stop here. We can stop here. Or... I can take you to a secret spot that nobody stops at. We were like, well, sir, we want the secret spot. Right. <laughs> so we go to this little beach and it was beautiful. And it's, so it's the same like lake that you're, it's a lake that we're driving yeah. around the entire time. Um, and you're down, you know, just in, in, at a beach area with all the mountains up above. It was gorgeous. Um, it's a good call on his part to think, to think, like, let's stop there. Like, why not? Like, he doesn't, you know, he's like, no other tours are going to stop here. And this is a local place, you know, I just know about it. And I thought you guys might like it. Mm -hmm. um, he gave us the option of, like, a quiet ride or him to tell stories of, you know, the gold rush. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the entire bus chose to listen to his stories. And I'm so glad we did. Um, he is a, an amazing storyteller. Yeah. And the stories told were really cool. Like, we learned about some of the first people that found gold in Alaska. And, like, their family story, which was really cool. Um, but, yeah, it was one of the one of the best tours we've ever done. Like, hands down. Yeah. And going to the Yukon was cool. Like, getting to cross the border into Canada and then come back into Alaska was really neat. Like... They didn't care about us coming back into Alaska. Right. The customs people were like, all right, cool, peace. But when you're going into Canada, the Canadian customs officers were like, passport? Passport? Can I see your passport? <laughs> so that was interesting. Um, so after Skagway, we went to Ketchikan. Ketchikan. And I don't know if I would ever want to do Ketchikan again on Norwegian. 
um, you know, they dock at their own dock mm -hmm. that they built, um, which is, that's cool and all. And like the big port that they did build is really nice. Like it has a bunch of shopping and mm -hmm. I think it had like maybe an eating place in there. Yeah. I'm not quite, I can't quite, in a, a crap ton of bathrooms. Like if you've got to pee, pee and catch a can. Yes. Like in the Norwegian port and catch a can because my God, they probably had 150 bathrooms for the women in there. It was crazy. Um, but you do take a 20 minute shuttle into the city of Ketchikan and whereas that's fine, it just, right. it kind of took away that pulling into port and, you know, right. seeing the port and being, and in there. being right there. Yeah. Cause the other boats, I mean, their ships were yeah. right there at all the main downtown right. stuff. Um, there were a few places that I wanted to go to that were closed. Yeah, we because we um, came in so late. Yeah, um, it was like the the fry was it the Friday place or the yeah there's the donuts donuts yeah a bunch of stuff was closed yeah. and um, they're really it was very spread out. Mm -hmm. um, we would have had to take public transit and we did take, though. we did we and did. then go down and then you take it again and go to this part. Yeah. Very, very spread out. We so did, we did take the bus. Um, we, we live in a, in a town that has no public transportation like yeah. that. Like we have a car to bus and you just have to know what stop you're getting off. They stop at every stop, no matter. Yeah if someone's getting off or on what 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 whatever um just kind of like a, a subway in new york it stops at every mm -hmm. stop um but with this you have to pull the lever or pull the <laughs> pull the lever pull the lever girl pull the string you have to pull the string to tell her to stop and we just barely knew that um to stop we wanted to go to what was that creek street yeah um so we went to a brothel there because we thought it was gonna be kind of like the red onion in Skag and not Skagway, yeah, Skagway, Skagway, where they do like a full tour. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not, and it was more expensive, yeah. and it was really, it was small. Yeah, wasn't it really worth the yeah. time or the money? Like I wish we hadn't done it. I'm glad, I mean, we did do it, so we wouldn't do it again. Um, right. But Mimi really had wanted to do the Red Onion again, and we just really ran out of time in Skagway, so we decided we would do this one. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if we if we did catch a can again, it would be with another line, so we'd yeah. be closer to everything. Or at least maybe do an excursion, because I think if you take yeah. an excursion like through the ship, you leave from right there. Yeah. So we would just note that that's what we wanted to do. And in fact, I almost jumped on another whale watching trip with the friends from the first whale watching trip, <laughs> but the timing just didn't work out. By the time. I re like they left early, but so by the time I would have gotten back to get my money in order to book it, um, it they left early, so it wouldn't have worked out anyway. But I was like, gosh, I could have seen whales again. But they ended up not seeing any whales, so I guess it, or maybe they saw one. Maybe yeah, they, they didn't see I, near as many as we did. Yeah, I think they said they saw like one, like spout, like you know, far off. So it wasn't really worth the time or the money, and they spent like I, th I think that excursion was like double double the price but yeah. what we paid in icy straight so we are watching an icy straight point hands down if you're going there do it there juno wasn't bad when we went in 2017 but icy straight point is yeah the winner so that covers all of our ports yep all of our port wrap-ups so um, i guess we can talk about what we thought about the jewel in general yeah i mean the Jewel is a smaller ship. It is. It was tiny. Um, I mean, and some people like smaller ships. Some people like larger ships. But, you know, they I, they all pretty much have to be on the smaller side to really cruise yeah. Alaska. Especially if you want to get to the glaciers. Um, it, was, it was a decent ship. I mean, I liked it. I did too. Surprisingly enough, like, I felt like we found a bunch of places that we really liked. Mm -hmm. um, we liked Oceans. Yeah, and that's like the pub sports bar place. Yeah, it's like 24 7 food mm -hmm. and drinks. Which, of course, I was like, hello, because, you know, <laughs> if you get hungry, sometimes there's right? some food. And we really like Spinnaker Lounge. That's where they held a lot of things. A lot of things. Um, I'm you getting know, my cruise is confused, but is that where they had the mo uh, the mojito bar? 
the, the ship, yes, was not in the Spinnaker Lounge. Right, but there, there was that ship. There yes. was a mojito bar. It was inside of one of the specialty restaurants. Yeah, it was in the steakhouse. Um, and I absolutely loved the mojitos there. I mean, there was all sorts of kinds. Yeah. But they had weird hours. They did have weird hours. Um, so I went a few times. And I think it's based mainly on when the steakhouse is open. Yeah. It was at the total opposite end of like where the yeah. food is and where you're at most of the time. Right. So I went there a few times but didn't get there as much as I wanted to. And I, yeah. I think if you didn't know it was there, you, you wouldn't know. That's true. But um, it, was, it was neat. I liked it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think our room was okay. Mm -hmm. um, as a bigger girl, mm -hmm. the toilet situation being kind of in its own little space with that extra wall was a little yeah diff difficult. Um, it worked fine. Like, don't get me wrong. You get in there and you can go to the bathroom. Um, but I think if that wall was gone, it would have been a little mm -hmm. less cramped feeling. I did like the glass shower though. That's always mm -hmm. a plus. And we didn't have to fight with the curtain. Yeah. Now there were three of us in the room. Mm -hmm. And so my bed. Oh yes. Ended up being a, I guess I'll say cot. Yeah, but I mean, kind of like a roll away bed. Yeah. Cot it, situation, it, but like a regular mattress. Yeah. It folded out and, um, you know, had the springs on it and everything. And then you... Um, had a regular mattress from one of the beds and um, so it was placed basically in yeah. between Maria and me and Kayla so yeah. we were all right on top of each other so it was very interesting trying to get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night right. many times having to step off the side of her bed and yeah like making sure like put my foot down and like feeling for her feet like am I gonna step on you well and then if I tried to crawl out and go to the foot of my bed it would flip up yeah <laughs> so that was a little weird yeah. um i've never experienced that it's usually always that my bed's out of the ceiling so i mean i know you prefer not to be out of the ceiling <laughs> so do you prefer to be in the ceiling or do you prefer to be that low on the um, ground and the between the two beds well i mean i prefer royal in their couch bed yeah but we do like the couch beds um i mean i guess yeah i'd prefer to be on the ground yeah because i I, I do not need to be climbing up a ladder onto that little rickety <laughs> out the ceiling bed. that just scares me. It's so funny because I was so excited about it the first time we got a room like that. Really? I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get to sleep in the ceiling. I got halfway up the <laughs> ladder and was like holding on for dear life and shaking and being like, I can't do this. I can't get up there. I don't it's know what awful. happened. I hate it. So... Yeah, I think the jewel overall was a hit. We loved our captain. Yeah. He was hilarious. Every update we got from the captain, it was just like, everyone shut up. We want to listen to this. Like, he was hilarious. Um, I don't remember the cruise director mm -mm. all that much. I know it was a girl, but that was really about it. Um, yeah. We liked our bartenders. Yeah. They were nice. We, like, a lot of the bartenders in the Spinnaker Lounge, like, were really cool. Like, we really got to know them. Um, I feel like we were in there all the time. Yeah, you spend a lot of time in the Spinnaker Lounge when you're in Alaska. Now, side note about all of this, we did get to see the Northern Lights, mm -hmm. but it was only through a picture on your cell phone. Mm -hmm. So now that we're recording this so late from when this happened, um, I'm sure 90% of you, I hope at least, got to see them back in May. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of that same thing where you had to take pictures then to, in order to see them. Mm -hmm. So, which I, I don't know if that's all the time or if you can actually look up and see them. I think you have to be really close to the Arctic Circle and you have to be like in pitch black. Like Iceland or like yeah, really like high up you in wanna, Alaska. Yeah, you want to be really high up there and you it has to be like total blackness in order for you to see them with your eyes is what I have figured out. Like is more about light pollution than mm -hmm. it is anything else. And even though you're out on a cruise ship, the cruise ship is emitting light. Yeah, it's so, still lit up like a Christmas tree. That's, you know, that's part of the problem. So we got a text at like yeah. midnight. To, midnight or 1 a.m. or something like that. Yeah, she was like, hey, the, they're seeing the Northern Lights out the back of the ship, come on. So we ran and like, we ran. 
Because I was like, in our pajamas. In our pajamas. We were like, what if they go away? Like, we <laughs> ran. So we're out back on the aft deck um, where we were eating breakfast all the time. And it's this one guy with his like huge DSLR oh camera. God. And he was getting pictures that, oh, I like, mm, I wanted to steal him and just put him in my pocket and keep all of his pictures. Mm -hmm. But we were getting amazing shots as well. Like, it was the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. And like, after seeing it again in May, I realized that what we, like, we were seeing some of it with our eyes. Like, you were seeing, like, the white line, and then when we were taking the picture, it was green. And so now after seeing it in May, I realized what was happening. But obviously, back then, we were just thinking we were catching it with our phones, and that was it. Yeah. So, that's my advice for Alaska, is always just go out in the middle of the night, put your phone up to the sky, and take a picture. Ain't gonna kill you. You might see the northern lights. Um, you really might. Because <laughs> we did. And it was amazing. And I cried. Multiple times. <laughs> Crystal wanted to go to bed and I'm still just oh snapping gosh, pictures. so tired. We were so tired. It was, you know, that was after, was that after Catch a Can? I think so. I think it was, yeah. Because then we went into that last sea day where we were able to actually like get in the pool and get in the hot tubs and... It was insane. It was like... The closer we got to Canada... It warmed up. I mean, now granted, this cruise was not cold by any means. The only no. time I was actually cold was like the middle of the night where we were sitting up on like the 16th floor <laughs> looking For and it the, was windy yeah. and chilly, but like it was in the 50s and 60s, yeah. so it really wasn't bad. But that last day, it got warm. It did. It was sunny, not a bit of rain. I have <laughs> no idea where this was the entire time. Right? But yeah, we got in the pool. There was people tanning. Yeah. It was just wild. We got in the hot tub. Mm -hmm. um, we met more people in the hot tub. And then, I mean, really, that was, that brought us to the end. We yep. were in Vancouver and we got off now. The, it was the weirdest disembark debarkation. I almost said disembarkation. Like, what does that even mean? Debarkation, I think I've ever experienced. Like, we got off and literally, like, you walk into the terminal and it's you and it's the Disney people. Yeah. And you're just... Intermingling. Your, yeah, like, there. I think our luggage was a little bit separated yeah but not by much yeah it and you know normally when you get off a cruise you know they have their own little terminals right but i mean everywhere we looked there was disney ears mm -hmm. and there was disney luggage and signs for disney luggage right. it was like what What's and then going on? once you get your luggage i think we all went through the same customs yeah and then you're just pushed out into this like big vegetable best Big the, area. I, it was the Canada Center, right? Yes. Canada Place. Canada Place. And you're then left to find your own devices. Like, yeah, transportation, shuttles, whatever. You know, we were like, what do we do? Yeah, and we had to take an elevator. We, we couldn't figure out where to go because we were just trying to get to Uber. Yeah. And then you get up there and you think you're in the Uber Place and they can't pick you up from Canada Place. So we had to walk. It was like, what, like almost a half a mile? Yeah, with all of our luggage. All of our luggage to where you can catch the first uber from which was ridiculous if yeah. you ask me it was totally ridiculous so yes we had to walk all the way over there with all of our luggage and then catch an uber and we were just going to go to our hotel and drop off our luggage we had already called them and checked to see that they had like a luggage storage which they did and then we had purchased the hop on hop off uh -huh. package to explore Vancouver again and they actually let us check in and go to our room yeah which was amazing and this hotel was the nicest yeah. I think we've ever stayed in we had a Bellman okay and we we didn't know what to do right. like they're wanting to take our luggage and we're like we got it right like, exactly. I, got, I got a little more luggage but it wasn't it was actually it was really cool so we had like what floor to ceiling windows yeah. that overlook downtown Vancouver. It was really nice. Very nice hotel. So we didn't have to check our luggage after all. Right. So then we left. We did our hop on, hop off tour of Vancouver again. We We saw some spots we didn't see the last time. Did we though? 
I think so. We didn't go through the gardens all the way That's the last true. time. That's true. We didn't go to Stanley Park and like get off and like walk around last time. Mm -hmm. This time though, like the homelessness in Vancouver yeah. was like really bad and it wasn't like that before. Mm -hmm. um, when we I went in 2017, we got off in Chinatown and felt super yeah. comfortable. And this time, even the tour guide was like, I don't recommend people getting off in Chinatown. Yeah. Um, we got off in Gastown again. We ate lunch, which was really, really good. Um, just this like really like hole in the wall sandwich and soup shop. It was really good though, like highly recommended. Um, and then what else? We went to, we got Subway for dinner. So original, but we were exhausted. Yeah, I mean, we walked a lot, did a lot that day. We did. It was warm. Yeah. Then we went back to the hotel and got up and then we were checking out the next day. So we checked out, we actually did then store our luggage because we had a nighttime flight. We had a panic attack because United had gone down that morning. Yeah, all their systems were down. And so like no flights were leaving. We were like, well, crap. <laughs> Like, what are we gonna do now? But I think by, by the time we even figured out it was happening, it was already kind of like halfway resolved. Um, and then it was resolved like 30 minutes. It was not a long thing, which was great. Um, we explored more of Vancouver. We got off in Stanley Park that day and explored Stanley Park. Um, I feel like we had gotten off somewhere else that day too. Oh, I think we realized that we really didn't need the two day yeah, pass. we really didn't. Um, we could have done it you know, in one day, I know yeah. I felt comfortable enough that morning to walk to Tim Hortons by myself. Yeah. Um, it was around the corner, but you know, I'm directionally challenged. Jeez. So when I pull up Apple Maps and I plug it in, I'm walking like a quarter of a mile in the wrong direction. <laughs> and then I'm like trying to see street names and I can't see. I'm blind, I swear. <laughs> and so I'm like, what does that street say? Yes. And I finally made it to Tim Hortons and got coffee and breakfast and walked back to so all sorts of really cool stores. There was like Skims and Nordstrom and Sephora and all these really fancy stores. We, I mean, Vancouver's a really nice city. I would love to go back and just like spend more time in Vancouver and maybe go up to what is the city that's like, it's like two hours north of Vancouver or maybe like an hour north of Vancouver. I can't mm. remember, but everyone talks about going there when they're in Vancouver. Uh, I would have liked to have maybe gone to their aquarium. Yeah, and there's a suspension bridge there too. Yes. Um, but we just, you know, we didn't. We had thought, if we had thought about it, if we had realized that we weren't going to need the second day yeah. of the hop on hop off tour, that's probably what we would have done. Um, but I yeah, we really enjoyed Vancouver. Yeah. And the nighttime flight did kind of suck, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah, arriving to Newark at like, what, 6 a.m.? Yeah. Whew. But Newark Airport is scary. Not scary, but like weird. Yeah. We had to change terminals. And instead of like, you know, most airports, when you change terminals, you have like a train and you get on the little train and you go, no. We had to walk down the tarmac, get on a bus, and then take the bus through the plane to we're leaving to go to the other terminal. It was wild. Beep, beep, excuse me. Yeah, and we, st we sat on the tarmac, I know, for like a good like still 20 minutes while the plane taxied out. I was like, this is weird. Is that where we lost Mimi? No, we lost Mimi in Denver, not Denver. Wherever we laid over the first time. Where was that? Where did we lay over? No. No. Don't remember. That's where we lost Mimi. She got on the train and we were like... We we had waited. to take a, a train that time to the different terminal and yeah. we, we told her to wait. And we were going to get breakfast. We weren't even like... Yeah. We were already at our seats, but we were like, oh, we're hungry. And like our terminal had no breakfast open or like no breakfasty foods, I should say. So we were like on the mat, like, oh, let's go to the Waffle House or whatever it was. I don't think it was a Waffle House. No. IHOP. The like IHOP yeah. over in whatever other terminal. And so we go to get on the train and I realize there's nowhere for Mimi to sit. And I'm like, Mimi cannot stand on the train. So we were like, okay, well, we'll get on the next one. She gets on. Some lady lets her take her child seat. She puts her child in her lap, I guess, is what ended up happening. So she finds the seat and we're on the train behind her calling her like, Mimi! 
but like what are you doing her phone's going to voicemail and like but at first we ran at the train <laughs> yeah and the worker guy thought that we'd like lost our child on yeah. there or something. He was like, do I need to stop that train? <laughs> and then we told her, just get off at the next thing you see and we'll just keep looking for you and we'll get off. But, but she did not get off at the next one. She was like two down. Yeah. But it's okay. We found her, obviously. She's good. Um, I think the only other thing that we were thinking of covering for this trip was the fact that I think a lot of our ship got really sick afterwards mm -hmm. um according to the facebook page um covid was rampant poor mimi got it um a lot of people were getting the flu um rsv rsv yeah like really weird sicknesses were coming off and i mean like a lot of people were complaining about it yeah it was a lot of the alaskan cruises yeah that's it toward the end of the season just so weird yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe the cold weather doesn't kill it. Yeah, we didn't get it. Yeah, but which she is, did. Because she was in our room. We all tested yeah. negative. So, I don't know. But all in all, Alaska was phenomenal. Like, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10 would do it again. <laughs> maybe not Crystal. All right. Well, <laughs> that was a wrap up of our time in Alaska. Uh, anything you want to add? I mean, I recommend it for sure. It's something you need to do <laughs> at least three times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know that we can do anything different, but. That's true. We can go away watching again though. And we can find our friend who drew a bear on my hand and go back to the Yukon. He drew a bear on my hand, remember? Oh yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. Because we kept saying we wanted to see a bear. Oh yeah. She was all about seeing bears, yet everywhere we went there were signs that said, mm -hmm. beware of bears. We never saw one. Never saw one. Mm -mm. We didn't have to beware. Of the bear. We saw birds. We did see birds. We saw whales. Seals, otters. Yep. Starfish. That was about it. All right. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. bye. Say bye, Bella. Bye, Bella.